Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Console Gaming League Finals Week, Grand Finals Week here uh, for the CGL, for our Overwatch tournament. I'm Korvac, joined in the broadcasting booth by Skate Action, who is pulling double duty tonight as both color commentator and producer. Thank you so much, Skate. And what do we have on the docket for uh, tonight's action? Uh, well, we've got Division 2 finals here, so this is setting the stage for the Grand Finals. we got no one against Cement. They are 1 and 3 uh, ranked uh, respectively in their team, or in their division, I should say. So because of the, the awkward way that we had to do the divisions in the uh, in the bracket program, 8 ends up being the 1 in Division 2, and 10 is the 3 in Division 2. So ah, of course. Matt. I, I expect a tightly contested match since they are kind of the top of the Division 2 tier uh, going into this final. Yeah, it's certainly going to be, uh, I think, an exciting matchup. And funny enough, so I actually watched uh, some of the players from uh, Cement last night. They were scrimming a team that I help work with slash yeah, coach for, I guess. Um, so I've actually seen some of them in action. Uh, and it's given me a little bit of interesting insight here. I know that Surfy Juggler was playing a Hammond uh, to a great effect against the team that I was coaching last night. I saw them run some dive compositions. They did not shy away from it. And they did a good job on the execution of it as well. It was pretty impressive. I uh, can't really see the same for no one, but it'll be interesting to see what they have. Uh, I will say that Cement, despite their name, has a very fast and aggressive play style, at least from what I saw during the scrim yesterday. Well, we'll have to see if they can come out with that fast, aggressive style as we are going to load into Li Zhang Tower. It's going to be the first map. My map screen is not ready to roll, so we're going to uh, forget that little bit even happened, and we'll just roll right ah. into the map. We'll do it live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do it live. I nearly swore right there to do the full quote, but held back. <laughs> held back. That's, that's Jeez, the that's running joke right. of the night, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I uh, kind of kind of wanted to throw that one out there, but I did not. Um, so here we are. Uh, going into Lijong Tower, of course, Control Center. Uh, just testing the pause there, ladies and gentlemen. No need to uh, panic run for the exits. Uh, Control Center, of course, the indoor portion, right? Uh, yes. Usually favors the most close quarter fighting, but we see Darkness Blue on that Bastion, which I assume cannot stay. Tropics on the far. Uh, yeah, Darkness will switch over to McCree there, but they are running Surfy Juggler on the Hammond. Meanwhile, on the other side, going for the Sim Teleporter. Uh, Billowy Splash there on the Rhine. The Autumn Canvas switches over to the Reaper, and they'll push straight into the control room here, wasting no time. That Maywall goes up, Guav Feather kind of caught out. Surfy Juggler, though, coming on the backside, they'll lose a Brigida early on. That's Big Burrito going down. Bit of an unfortunate loss here. Really mostly happy for Tropics to just directly pump damage down the gut as that Farah. And uh, they're doing a pretty effective job of just zoning him out off the point scape before we really even got started. Yeah, and I'm actually kind of surprised that fight went that way. It was it was close quarters kind of on top of each other, and the team with the ranged attack ended up winning that. I don't I didn't exactly see how that happened, but uh, the May and Reaper you think would thrive in that scenario. Well, out comes the coalescence. Oh! Immediately countered out by the Earth Shatter. There's the charge on the back end. Guav Feather getting a kill in there as well and opening the door for the rest of his team to just go ham up in here. And again, the ball player, Surfy Juggler in the back line there, really doing a great job of using that character, just kind of mobility to best effect, kind of cutting off those retreat lines, Skate. Yeah, they're they're playing it to perfection right now. Not a, the true off tank role. It's it's like he's a he's a third DPS and kind of flanking and just getting some aggression into that back line and just just disrupting everything that no one is trying to do right now. Yeah, it's a bit difficult for no one there. They're clearly struggling a little bit to adapt, and that alt economy not going to favor them at all as they begin to push here. There's Surfy Juggler deploying the minefield. They're going to push straight up into this. Unfortunately, minefield may be a little bit short. Barrage coming out on the long hallway. That's Tropics hunting for something. Billowy Slash didn't go down to the barrage, but it certainly did a good job of zoning them back out, and they'll fall right back up to the lander there. Try and get Billowy back in as they can. They need that Reinhardt if they're ever going to have any luck pushing up here. Armor pack's already being distributed. Big Burrito does have the ultimate if she chooses to use it, or if they choose to use it, I should say. There comes the ultimate coalescence on the backside. They're starting to push forward now. Out comes the Blizzard by no one, and that's a good one. It's set up a huge play by Legunk there, who uh, gets three coming off the back end. Autumn Canvas will contribute just a little bit to that one as well, leaving just Slippery Juggler to contest the point. 
Unfortunately, the ball not able to hold on to it for long, and they will reset the timer here, though. 92% skate, nothing to scoff at. Uh, no, definitely not. Nothing to hang your head on. And actually, 92% is and sometimes better than 99% because you don't get the instant overtime contest if you happen to flip this point. So it could end up paying dividends for Cement that it went to 92 instead of 99. Well, wall coming up early. Guadalajara are caught out by that. Might survive here. Coalescence coming in to help. Grab getting thrown out as well. They throw out the sand barrier there in the top of the Coalescence uh, to help out with the team. Over the top comes Juggler just trying to cause some havoc. Juggler gets caught out by Autumn Canvas and burned down, though. Now the charge coming forward, but they've lost Guad Feather as well, so both tanks are down. A high noon there blocked off of the May Wall. Great play on the side of Madly to stop that one going off. Autumn Canvas picks off his opposite number on the McCree, and they will send uh, the boys here packing back to the door, or at least the entryway, as it were. Yeah, and uh, the stream got to see it firsthand. I was on darkness there as he popped the uh, the, the uh, dead eye there, and the wall came up as soon as three skulls came online. So that was a 3K prevented by Madly on that bank. Well, another push coming in. Blizzard thrown out there. Not a ton of value out of it, but it will, I think, help no one at least secure Ooh. the end of this fight. Hammer down coming out as well. Not a lot of value out of that either. These ults getting thrown in, but it doesn't really matter if they're deriving ultimate value skate because they are deriving the wins. Yeah, right now it's not really mattering too much that they're using the ults as, as you know liberally as they are because they're even in the ult advantage. As we see the grab still online for, I'm going to say it's Aviant. <laughs> That's a tough one. AV tents. AV something. There's the grab, speak of the devil, but the Coalescence already out to help. High Noon gets blocked out. Good little bit of shield play there from the tanks. They will need to get on here, though. Tropics gets one with the tire. Counter Coalescence coming out as well. Rally on deck here for the Brigida, who's using that as a good excuse to get very aggressive. Big Burrito trying to make something stick. Can't quite do it. High Noon comes out. No luck there. Guam Feather throwing in the shatter. Gets one. Surfy Juggler on the outside edge. That tank player doing such a good job of zoning out the point. And honestly, Skate, that's uh, probably curtains here. I don't think there's anybody who can touch. No, I say that. Here comes a Doomfist from out of nowhere. That's Madly trying to stay on, but unfortunately too little too oh! late. Which is what you could say about that shatter as well, I'm afraid. Yeah, they needed just a little bit more time, and I don't really think the percentage mattered there because had it been a 99, I think we would have had the same result there, uh, all things considered. But uh, a great little uh, first round to start off, 192. I think we're in for a long one here. Uh, whether that be good or bad, I guess in some cases it could go pretty late uh, given that we are playing uh, first to three, I think we decided on this. Ooh, you know what? We should probably double check I that because I was under the impression. Was I was under the impression that division finals are going to first to four. That was my impression. Um, but we'll get a double confirmation on those rules. We don't want anybody, unfortunately, having to play more maps than, than is absolutely necessary. Uh, both sides here are going to come in with the Symmetra teleporters, Madly and Darkness, respectively. Um, so we'll see if they can get the value out of that. One team getting there almost simultaneously dropping in. The ball making maybe all the difference on the run-up here, though. Uh, if they can get in and get some value out of it. Surfy Juggler trying to get something going. Can't really because it's LTD who goes down first. Surfy tries to come out and get the boob. Has no success there. Good pile drive on the outside edge. Darkness really going to town with the charged up beam, but Autumn Canvas on the outside edge getting the picks he needs. Unfortunately, probably just a little too late on the picks there, and they will force them back out. They did not capture the point yet, though. And finally, it will be the ball rolling back. Surfy Juggler, who will get the initial cap. Then Surfy's going to just get aggressive here and try and cause a little bit of havoc before backing off. A little bit of help from the low bronze coming up. But ultimately, the teleporter is still functioning for both sides. They'll drop into another big brawl again here. Billowy Splash trying to get engaged. Goes down almost immediately there. Big Burrito can't survive any better. The Coalition's coming out very late in this fight. Sound Barrier also deployed. The tank's now charging out. That's a huge charge. Didn't quite finish off Legunk, though. They will push them back out the front door again, Kate. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't know what the answer is here. It looks like everything was set up for no one to just kind of pile onto that point, but uh, no dice so far. We'll have to see what they can get done here, but the alt economy not in their favor. We see four online for Cement heading into this fight. 
Well, they're going to start with the rally here. Gravitic Flux is coming out. Not a ton of value out of that. They do get the ball out of it. So I guess that is a big value. Didn't quite see him get caught on the outside edge. Now Madly coming in the backside gets LTD with a big punch. And that might single a bad end to this. The die die down on the backside, almost wholly absorbed by the Sigma there. We'll get no value out of it at all. Autumn Canvas pops another one. So a ton of ults thrown out in this fight skate. But at the end of the day, it's no one who are left standing. Yeah, I hope someone was keeping track. I counted about nine there coming out. I don't know what the actual total was. <laughs> I, I don't think you're far off. Everybody who had one pressed it there, I think. And we see uh, the one, the two alts online here are by both of the Reinhardt. So we, the earth may be shattering very quickly on these fights. We'll see who gets the block and who gets the big shatter, because that should make the difference in this team fight. Madly again, Doof is such an assassin these days, really just a pain to deal with. And showing it on full display here is Madly. He will get brought down to the backside eventually, but the Coalescence is forced out by Legunk. Getting pressured in the back line, keeps that Coalescence powered down. Ooh, good shatter on the other side, but can they follow up on it? Billy Splash gets one, immediately taken down a return. Now the counter Coalescence coming out here from LTD. More than happy to escort the team to the point with that. Big Burrito going down, singles what should be the effective end to this hold. Unless, of course, Madly can do something about it. Nearly takes oh. LTD for a ride off the edge of the map. Comes back in with the fist, that surfy juggler going down. The Doofist holding on, gets another one. My word. He's still fighting it out, but he will get brought down eventually. Fortunately, can't carry it alone forever. Billowy splash back in now, has a healer on the pocket, so they will continue to contest this, thanks mostly to Badly's hard work. High Noon coming out on the backside, sound barrier thrown in. Shatter comes out, that cancels out any value that was gonna come out of High Noon. Good Gravitic here. Might get a low bronze. Sure enough, they get the Lucio out of the fight. Now Madly's back in. LTD again being attacked by his perennial. Oh, great accretion as well to shut down the Reaper. And it's Evie and Tet there trying to push back in. Legunk gets taken out. And finally, Billowy Splash, the only one left standing, might oh, no. just about die. But they did flip that point much earlier on in that fight, I should say. Yeah, and that's going to come into play here. We'll have to see if Billowy can get back in time. It's already up to 95. I don't think they realize how quick they got to touch. Do Doom does realize it. Oh, gets oh. booped back by the Lucio. Boop! Victory. <laughs> Tragic. Well played by a low bronze there, I think, came up and just uh, set uh, Doomfist kind of in the opposite direction of where he intended to go with that charge. And yeah, it will secure a, them the win. That was a big brain play there by the Lucio. Just seeing the Doom coming in, knowing the situation, and happened to be in the right place at the right time, and had the boop up. Big Burrito picking up the play of the game there uh, for some vigorous Burgita play. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, did you provide a lot of armor. <laughs> Did provide a lot of armor, all fairness. Yeah. Of course, some Brigitte changes are coming down the pipe today, so maybe that's, uh, you know. All's fair, all's fair. All's fair. Uh, Cement going to take the 1 0 lead, so they're going to get on the board first. Um, I'm still checking on the uh, first to three, first to four. Apparently, there is some uh, some confusion within the admin, so we will get that all sorted out before we come to the end of this, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's hope we have a conclusion to it, at least. Uh, <laughs> the, the map changed and no reason to flip sides here unless the team is really going to. But uh, we will have to see. It will be uh, losers pick on the map. We will go to a hybrid next. Hybrid map types, of course, always providing their own set of challenges. My favorite map type, to be honest. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what we roll out with there. Um, I don't think there's a ton of reason for them to kind of switch off the ball. I think it could have been more impactful uh, at a lot of times. At least Surfy Juggler maybe could have gotten a little bit more value to it. Credit to no one for kind of closing down on it. But uh, I don't know. There were there were some definitely some problems with, with no one's uh, performance. Uh, I think their tank line got a little bit manhandled there. Godfather was just kind of pushing things a little bit harder uh, on the front side. But ultimately, I think by the end of those maps, they were pretty close to being about the same level. Like, I, I think there wasn't much in it between yeah. these two teams uh, on that second stage. Yeah, there was give and take, I think, on both sides there. Uh, you had times were different, you know, 
other squad stepped up and you had, you know, some big DPS plays where you had the tank get in a great spot and just be able to create some space for his team. So I think this is a very closely contested match. It's going to be a very good final uh, moving forward. We'll have to see how many maps it is. It looks like King's Row will be the map choice for map number two. Uh, a pretty popular uh, map here for the, uh, for the second one. Yeah, we saw it played in our EU T2 finals earlier today. King's Row, for a lot of people, right, is the, is the comfort map. Uh, it's where you go back to when you want to try and maybe reclaim a little bit momentum. It's it's funny, Skate, and I think you would agree with me. A lot of teams in Overwatch at any level of play kind of consider King's Row to be, like, the home stage. <laughs> you know, like, this is, yeah. where, this is where you feel your strongest, um, which is funny. I mean, it is... A, it is arguably like a really well-designed map, but it does have a popularity perhaps beyond its uh, its physical stature, you know, uh, yeah. in terms of how much people like to play it. Yeah, and it's it's just a solid map. I mean, nobody ever questions, you know, how when they talk about some bad maps, nobody ever questions King's Row. Like, that's one of the best maps no. in the game, easily. So that's why it's usually the pick. Everybody's most comfortable there. And uh, I, I screwed up the map scene there. Let me fix that. There you go. So you can actually see the picture of the map now. But uh, yeah, we see Cement had the 2-0 win there on Lijang Tower. It's closer. It was closer than that actually looks. Oh, so, yeah, 100%. So we'll have the the first that. one, but the second one definitely close. Yeah, definitely, definitely close. So uh, we are waiting on the ready up to see if there's any kind of side swap or anything like that. I think one of the kind of interesting things uh, to, to draw from that was, uh, you know, without the momentum shift of winning that first stage, would we have seen a stronger performance from no one um, going into that second map? And I, I do kind of wonder, uh, on a King's Row map where the momentum shifts don't feel quite as sting swingy, there's not like a break, it's, it's one continuous kind of stage i do wonder if no one will will shine a little bit more it looks like they're also making a change to their lineup here um swapping out their off tank player uh and bringing in a replacement so that change is coming in as well oh it may have been a dc okay i see that uh that's unfortunate but you know I think I would normally be saying at this point in time that they need to do a little bit better job of containing Surfy Juggler as well, just, just trying to stop the ball from causing so much havoc. But then again, I don't feel like the ball derived a ton of value. What I really think they need to do is, yeah. is pump a little bit more support into Billowy, um, who, who does seem to be kind of having a rough go of it on the front line. Um, mm -hmm. And I think if they could just get him... I mean, we kind of saw it happening with Big Burrito on the Brigida, right? And I, it was very much working, in my opinion, when they kind of had that Brigida just attached to Billowy's hip uh, for most of those maps, or for the for the second half of the map. Yeah, I think you're right there. Um, it I looks like we are going to have a swap of sides, so I do get to move everybody and switch colors, just as we thought we weren't going to have to, and now it looks like we will, so uh, I will go ahead and start flipping those sides on. for us. Yeah, just as I thought we were ready. So it happens, though. That's that's part of the game. They Overwatch. Get that choice. Yeah, Colors. Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't forget to swap the team names too, Skate. You wouldn't want anybody to get confused. You had to mention it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> because I would have forgotten. Just trying to keep you on the. Just trying to keep you on the level, man. You know, we're, we're trying to run a top tier NA production here. Oh, when did we start that? I don't know. <laughs> a while back. But uh, we'll we'll see what we've got on the deck. So Kings Row will be next. Losers pick Assault will be the map that comes after this. Then we'll have a Escort. Uh, we'll go as long as we need to. Again, we are just trying to get clarification on whether or not Divisional Finals are best of three or best of four. Um, I, it's something that a lot of people are, that there's been a lot of discussion about, uh, though I do think we did reach a final conclusion. I'm just not sure that we're in the uh, quote loop about it, uh, as it were. 
Thank you all for joining us. Do keep in mind that there's a ton more Overwatch action coming from the CGL over the next two weeks. This is our Grand Finals week for Xbox, so you'll be seeing every Xbox tier with their finals, and some divisional finals as well will be on display for you, uh, so plenty to watch in that regard. And then next week, it is our PS4 finals week, uh, so you'll see a lot of the same stuff coming out the gate for PS4. Uh, Friday, looking to be a kind of exciting day. Uh, a lot of good games there. I think we have three separate tier finals going on i want to say tier two tier four and t6 so all of our half our tiers in the na side will be playing that day yeah it's gonna be a big day uh friday there's gonna be a lot of overwatch action and i think um i'm also going to put some links out there so you guys can watch both games side by side because i know a lot of you will want to keep track of all the games so you don't have to keep a bunch of tabs open and keep flipping back and forth there are some options out there to watch all of them at once, so why not? You We're going to the Buffalo audio. Wild Wings it up. If, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll B-dub it all the way. We'll, we'll go quad box if we have to. We'll do whatever we can. If, if you decide that you don't like what Corbeck and I have to say, guess what? You can mute us and listen to the other stream if you want. So yeah, <laughs> you have that option. Yeah. We like to provide options. Um, <laughs> looks like we're still waiting for... Yeah, it looks like it was a disconnect. <sighs> A disconnect here yeah so it, it's a little bit of a problem unfortunately um but hey no one they've got some time here they can get someone back in also no one is versing no one right now uh it should Which be is, updated uh, i don't know why it's not updated on your end it's updated there on we mine. go <laughs> lag oh, in I real was, time ladies and gentlemen weirdly, i think it was because i was still highlighted over the name weird oh that's fascinating yeah the more, the more you know, you know. <laughs> the more you know. Uh, but we'll be seeing what we can get here. Um, looking back on King's Row, I think it was interesting. So we saw Tropics come out there uh, with the Farah early on for Cement. Played it pretty well. Yeah. Didn't have any real hard counters until the Mercury came out. It wasn't a traditional Farah map, right? You don't usually right. run the Farah in the control center. Uh, but it worked. Uh, this, however, a much more Farah friendly map, at least the initial two stages. I do wonder if we see that again. It, it certainly plays into the idea of the ball being uh, kind of disruptive to add that Farah to the mix as well. Yeah, I, I would expect to see that far. I thought they got a, it. It's wild. Like you said, they got a lot of value out of it in Control Center. They went right up the server room with a McCree and a Farah and just basically punched yep. the team in the mouth. They had the Reaper and the May. I would have never thought that to be the case, but uh, it kind of worked out. And I think yeah. a lot of it had to do with that ball, the way it was disrupting the back line. And it just kind of threw off the equilibrium of, uh, of no one there. <laughs> they just didn't really have an answer. Yeah, I think that you're 100% correct there. I mean, I think the the other character probably worth talking about that seems to be having a disproportionate impact these mm -hmm. days uh, is the Doomfist. Uh, Doomfist, yes. it, it at least in these ranks uh, down you know down the ladder a little bit, seems to be having kind of a, an impact uh, above and beyond what he really should be capable of. And I, and I guess it makes sense. He has the mobility. He has the one-hit kill potential. He has spectacular survivability uh, if you can nail his combos. And we yeah. saw earlier today in the Tier 2 EU Finals, the Doomfist players just popping off the entire time, getting kills. And we kind of saw flashes of that as well coming from Madly Dankart uh, towards the tail end of Lee Zhang. Um, the temptation on King's Row is there to play the Doomfist game. It's a good map for him. It is, and I do have to mention that in the chat, I uh, did get a uh, Twitch Prime sub, so I do want to call that out. Thank you, Not Assured, for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate that. And we looks like we are ready, and we are going to go ahead and roll into King's Row. So long enough of a delay, we were able to get the player back in and connected and in the spot, so everything should be good to go now. Hopefully. It's good, because I don't know how much stall content we could continue to make. <laughs> You are the king of the stall. So we were we were about we were about this close to talking about architecture on. King, on I mean, King we can. Zone. I mean, look at that clock. The thing is 3D. It comes Fine out. Fine buildings. <laughs> Fine buildings, my man. Fine buildings. Yes, I mean we can. We I can do often about... wonder, is this what Americans think of when they think of London? And I think it might actually be. It probably is. just dreary streets kind of a pseudo victorian feel to the whole place it does have that um, feel doesn't it <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't look like this uh sometimes it does uh, okay. but not all the time yeah just dark <laughs> oppressive <laughs> <laughs> industrial hellhole it's more of a birmingham really if there is honest. no sun um 
There is no sun, yeah. What's a glowing yellow orb in the sky? Um, you know, I was casting earlier today. Somebody threw up a diva bomb on, was it Busan? And I actually lost it in the sun uh, that's on that map. The I'm sun lucky. on that map is actually really bright. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, that's strange. But uh, apparently that's a thing that could happen. Uh, like all of my uh, high school ba 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 baseball games right there, losing <laughs> stuff in the sun. Baseball's unique. And there's like the Farah. <laughs> But it's coming from Autumn Canvas this time, so not the side that we expected. Madly Dankar playing the Widowmaker here. Uh, it's an interesting switch. Uh, a lot of Widow being played down here in these ranks today, apparently. But Widow has a little bit of a hamster problem. Uh, yeah, chewing at the wires. <laughs> Causing a little bit of havoc in the back line. Billy Splash gets taken down early, but a low bronze follows him into the pit right there. Not particular great. Guavfather more than happy to hold that front line, though he does have full control. They're throwing down these Torbjorn turrets. Unfortunately, the Torbjorn turret is going to be a bit of an easy prey for both the Farah and the Widowmaker. They're losing people now on the front lines as Billowy Splash begins to push forward and momentum completely shifting here. And I think we can safely say, Skate, that's about good night, Irene, for this. Yeah, and it looks like we already have a swap as Darkness is going to go over to that McCree to try and help out here which is what they desperately need. There's nothing to answer that pharmacy right now on the side of Cement, so we'll have to see if this is the change that they needed. Oh, a oh, big stall here. Oh, oh, God. I thought they were going to try it. Oh, God. No, Surfy Juggler just got annihilated on that point. That ball died so quickly. And they're not stopping here, Skate. They're pushing forward real aggressively. Guapfather can't do anything but just run away. Tropics <laughs> hiding in his shadow darkness there as well, trying to do anything they can to avoid oh, these far rockets coming down. Out comes the Torbjorn turret, but again, the value being derived from the Torbjorn right here, Skate, I don't see it. I just I, don't see it. I don't either. I think it's, and, and now they're getting into that weird territory where you're 78% to an alt, and I Jeez. think you have to swap. I think you have to negate the alt. You need to swap now. I don't think you have time to wait. I mean, we get one pick here, Badly Dankart coming out, but still Guavfather being forced back yet again. Madly will be rezzed right back into it. They will swap. Tropics is going over to the Ash here. Literally no choice but to hold on to that. Uh, Surf E Juggler coming back around the outside edge. The Coalescence coming in for the healing. They have managed to separate Billowy Splash out. He gets a shatter in. Doesn't get much value out of it, though. It's a good block. Surf E Juggler, though, gets a ton of value. Look at the destruction that minefield caused. That little hamster in his giant mechanical death ball. Uh, really living up to the name. Yeah, that was impressive. Just coming in behind the enemy team and just dropping that minefield behind. The Rhine came in of Guavfather just aggressively, and the team hole all backed up and hit right into those mines. Uh, so a little unfortunate there for uh, the side of no one, but finally Cement gets that stop, and we'll have to see how long they stay with this far. I expect the swap after this barrage comes out. Yeah, the double hit scan is doing a lot, I think, to, to make the Farah's life a living hell. Guavfather trying to play up on the corner of the bookstore, not having a ton of luck. Fire in the hole coming out straight down the gut. Goes around the backside instead. Looking for a target. Comes right up the middle. Gets Guavfather. That'll take the Reinhardt out of commission. A lot of space being opened up by the loss of that tank. Consider the fact that the Wrecking Ball can't really hold that frontline presence like a Reinhardt does. And appears to be a low bronze is the one who will stall it out. He's your pseudo Reinhardt for today. <laughs> Not going particularly great for him. No, it usually doesn't in that case. But I want to say hats off to the, the support players right now of Cement, LTD, and a low bronze for keeping that Rhine up in the absence of an off oh. Field again. Legunk goes down. And with the Coalescence coming out as well, they'll get more kills out of that. And Survey Juggler is getting such value out of an ult that is good but uh, no it's got no reason to be that good let's be honest yeah but you know it, it plays into king's row a little bit you have those narrow corridors that you're kind of forced down to so you really have you're in no man's land if you have to back up and that's what he's doing he's just dropping it in a spot where there's nowhere else to go it's just a heads up play by surfy to put those in the right spot well, Guav backing up, giving a little bit of room here. Down comes the Breaking Ball in the back line. The grab coming in the Shatter as well. Barrage comes over the top. Sound Barrier thrown out at a perfect time to keep the team alive through all of that. And Guav Father will fight Splash on the front side. Great Shatter underneath the cart. But can they get anything out of it? No, huge Shatter, no follow-up. High Noon coming out 
on top of the card itself, but it'll be blocked oh. down. They lose LTD, but they trade healers. As Big Burrito goes down almost immediately, the kills flying back and forth here. Tropics needs to get up with the rest of the team, but despite the fight being relatively even, it is no one who back up and give the space. And that's where we see the importance of that main tank. It's the fact that Billow went out, but they were still up, I think, 5v4 in that fight, but they had no frontline presence, so they opted for the, the soft reset here as they're going to get a quick contest. Minefield coming out again, I believe, by Surfy Juggler. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I just heard Area denied. Here to my sleep. No, it's there. <laughs> mine got up on top of the mine got up on top of the roof. Not exactly sure how that happened, but okay. It happens sometimes. <laughs> Don't question it. Forward, somebody, somebody's going to find that later and be really unhappy. <laughs> Correct. Uh, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> some poor guy is going to be replacing the shingles. Uh, yeah. Gonna all be <laughs> it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> Darkness keeping a couple of shots down the front choke there. Not getting a lot of value at it. Only 50 seconds left on the clock. And, uh, you know, this is high time here for no one to really make some plays. The tire might be the initial. It's a good shatter. Gets oh, gets a big pin. And they'll capitalize that on getting the Reinhardt out of it. They'll lose LTD as well. Three kills in the bank. Four kills make it. And that should break this wide open. The only person left to contest is a low bronze. And unfortunately, uh, well, he's going to stay down there for a while. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not going to help you climb out of bronze. We'll put it that way. Uh, being 1v5 on the point there. But a nice little job by... Able to get that Reinhardt out of the play. I think the main tank is what's going to make the difference in these fights as it looks like if the main tank goes down, so does the rest of the team. Well, the, the bombs, the mines over the top and a good slam there. Unfortunately, the majority of that minefield got stuck up on the ceiling. Still, somehow, Big Burrito dies in the midst of all that. Yeah. Billowy Splash gets murked as well. And that'll signal a full retreat to the spawn doors and they need to get inside and take some cover. This is the kind of aggressive play I 100% expected from Cement when I saw them play last night. They like spawn trap skate. This is something they enjoy. And you know what? If they are allowed to do it, then they're going to thrive because there's nothing that can set a team off more than getting spawn camped and just being held right at that spawn. It is a tilting uh, strategy if you're on the other side of that. And it kind of seems to be working here, really looking like they're a little bit unhappy as no one. They're going to invest the sound barrier and just keep the pressure on. They're charging forward now, Avian going down. Autumn Canvas finally gets Surfy Juggler out of the fight in time for the rest of his team to sort of regroup here at the spawn doors. Two ultimates in the bank. One of them is a grab. They're nearly on the earth shatter. Maybe they can make something happen here. Billowy Splash pushing forward. You hear those Reaper shotguns just ceaseless firing. Oh, Great shatter. shatter, the huge shatter. They'll start to rack up some kills. And this is where the spawn door hold starts to come back and bite you just a little bit. If you don't have the speed skate, it can be a real problem. It can, but you know, that spawn advantage here, they're gonna get at least one more contest here as it, the payload is just now starting to make that last turn towards that in, that final push, towards that little yellow pad that you have to get that payload to. So we'll have to see what happens out of this as the tire comes out with the grab. Whoa. Wrath tire, no, he loses the tire to Tropics and the Coalescence. Now the TAC Visor coming out. There's nothing they can do. The Nano Boost comes in there, just trying to keep Splash in the fight, keep a body in front of that soldier. But Madly gets one with his death bombs. Didn't expect that. No, 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 and they're continuing to fight here. Here comes the slam over the top of the dreaded minefield is the down. Mines get in and get two. Oh, no, he's got two. Maybe three here. The hamster is oh. off the chain, and they'll end it. My lord. I think the cat's got, Okay, you got another here. one at the end, too. <laughs> I think the cat's out of the bag with the strategy here with the, with the hamster. We figured it out. It's oh, a, my lord. Throwing mines in the back and just being annoying, doing exactly what that character was designed to do. And uh, hats off to uh, Surfy for playing it to a T right now. My word. I, I think that's yeah, who you need to be counting if you're on no one. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're going to start feeling the pressure to really shut down that hamster. We didn't quite see them deriving this much value out of it on Lijong, but on this map, it has been huge. I mean, he's getting almost he's getting at least one kill per minefield, uh, sometimes a lot more yeah. uh, in the three or four times that we saw it deployed on this run. And honestly, it, you just got to play. You just got to play around him. You got to shut him down somehow because he is getting way too much space to operate. 
Yeah, they got to have an answer. It looks like we already see an answer coming out on the side of Autumn as the Sombra comes out. Just no more ball for you. You don't get to go into ball mode. Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> anyway, no more Mr. Clean there. Uh, <laughs> Survey Juggler, though, not going to not gonna stop running on the ball. He's going to try it. I'm interested to see if Autumn Canvas can shut this down. We'll, we'll have to see. It, it'll be curious. to. I mean, that's a big gamble there to say that we have to take that out. But uh, it could pay off big because, like I said, that ball won at least two of those team fights with those ults. Well, ball getting started already, trying to roll around on the backside. The Ash on the high ground there, that's Madly getting a couple of shots in. Not getting any picks, though. Has to be careful. Got a Tracer coming up to him. The ball goes in. Can they get the hack off on the ball? No, they cannot. Ball will remain in the back line. They're giving him some space again. Somber does get a pick, though. Not on the ball, but on the Junkrat instead. Autumn Canvas nowhere to be seen next to the ball. Presumably, they're supposed to be corralling. The front line getting a bit bullied right now as Autumn Canvas is actually on the high ground firing down into the enemy's team. Guav Fe Father coming forward here, just putting a lot of pressure on the front line. Madly Dankart will go down. A real tight grouping here on the outside edge and somebody actually needs to come forward and contest this point. The sound barrier getting thrown in should just about signal bad news here for the defenders. The hack comes in, but it's on a low bronze. It's not on the ball. Uh, and it looks like it's Curtains oh. here for this first point defense, and they'll throw in a shatter just to make sure. Guav is playing super aggressive, and his team is thriving on it. He's already halfway down the streets phase, and the payload is just now starting to move. Somebody stop this man. And Surfy Juggler gets two on the minefield there oh, as well. Oh, and the pin. Uh, and the pin. I think we can safely say that uh, they need a hard reset there, Skate. Yeah, uh, I don't think Sombra's the answer. I think uh, the jury has decided that that is not the uh, the drone you were looking for in this battle. So Well, yeah, at least not the way it's being played right now. I mean, I think we kind of suspected that they were going to run Autumn Canvas on this Sombra with the specific intent that she would focus the ball. But really, she's kind of just been doing Sombra stuff to, like in yeah. the back line not helping with that bob coming out they try and throw the beatdown bongos in it as well they do have the junk rat kind of caught out on the left hand side there that'll be darkness who's in a bit of trouble surfy juggler finally goes down on the back side to lose a low bronze but the tire coming oh. out to try and even it up no billowy splash gets it in midair and though they lose madly dankart i think we can safely say that they've at least stopped this push for a few seconds yeah, that was a great way to stop that push coming in with that, that bongo. That bongo got a lot of value, I think, there, and, and getting those first couple picks and just kind of setting the pace. Now, I do like the tank combo that we see on the side of No One with the Orisa and the Sigma to battle this line, but uh, we'll have to see how long they can stay on that ball because I don't think you can against that tank combo. Yeah, they're really starting to put the screws on Surfy now. That's the second kind of ignominious end he's had. They're starting to push up now, too, and maybe hit their stride just a little bit. Billowy Splash throwing the shield down there on the corner. More than happy to play around it. And you can see his partner, Avian, more than happy to push up there as well. Avian comes forward, absorbs a little bit of damage just to boost the shields. The double barrier is getting wrecked, though, by the Shatter. But they'll throw in the Gravitic Flux on the backside to cancel out the majority of the value. Now they have a Nano Reaper charging for them. All speed ahead. Guns full forward. Surfy Juggler. Just as we were saying, he might have to clock out, gets one with the minefield and really enables his team to push up and just crush him. Yeah, I guess that's it, it's just going to pay off eventually every time when he gets that ult. He's just going to get ult value. But I guess if that's the case, then you could stay on it because of the amount of space that you're getting and the time bank is on your side now. So they may be able to just to make it work just with brute force at this point. Well, Avian Tet, uh, I, I thought had had enough there for a second, had switched over to the ball themselves, but instead they're going to come out on the Reinhardt. We also see a Doomfist in here. That's badly Dankard who's going to go in, but Billowy Splash getting taken down early on, so a lot of pressure being thrown in. Good EMP. Gets four. That should allow them to complete this one. Coalescence coming out there gets two. Surfing over the backside, trying to cause a little bit of havoc, but will run for the hills. And I think that'll signal a reset. Yeah, I, I gotta believe it will. As we see, not a lot of ults coming. We're gonna have a bit of a dry run, but Billy gonna have that uh, that bongo, which could make all the difference as everybody is close to ults. 
you got like two or three here that may come online just to, on the offset of that bongo. Well, the temptation of the bongo is strong right here if they choose to put it down. Autumn Cave is coming back out as the McCree. The charge up punch not really going anywhere. If you're going to use the bongo, use it now because you've got a man on hamster behind you and he's got a minefield in his pocket. And the minefield once more separating the team out. Both tanks down now. And I do think... This is a dangerous situation to be sure for the defenders. There's not a whole lot they can do here, Skate, honestly. There's really not. There's... Madly trying their best yes, to try please. and hold this one off. They'll throw the Death Blossom out on point, and that is all she wrote. Yeah, and Cement's going to go up 2-0 early in this match. We'll have to see if no one has any kind of rebound answer to come back. Surfy Juggler with the obvious. This has to be the 3K mine, I would believe. Kind of has to be. Uh, he's got Legunk there. Um, not a lot. <laughs> oh, no. That was the pin I was talking about when we were watching. That was that was not nice. <laughs> All right, and we will get the map set for the uh, the next round here, and see if we have any swaps as we will move over to the assault map. Assault, maybe an opportunity to try and reel things back in. But if we're being honest, uh, that that ball not going to uh, let up no matter what He's assault map anywhere. you pick. <laughs> no, he is not going anywhere. And they failed to curtail him up until kind of the middle there where they did do an okay job of closing him down, admittedly with the two tanks coming in to do it. Uh, the Sombra pick, which I feel like should have been... Uh, I mean, not the answer, but an answer was just not really utilized right or in the way that you would expect it to be. Like, it, I feel like if there's a ball in the field and you pick Sombra, you pick it so that she can hack the ball and make his life a living hell. Yeah. Uh, you don't necessarily pick her so that she can go and play flanking wars. I mean, it's not like the character is bad at that, let's be honest, but right. not what she's useful for in that situation. Yeah, it's really not. I, I don't know what the answer is here, only because I don't know the the depth of the hero pools on the side of no one, but uh, there has to be an answer out there for this ball because he has to be enemy number one. Uh, but unfortunately, when you start worrying about the ball on the back line, that opens up everything for your main tank and your DPS to do what they want, which is what this team is built around, and they're executing it to perfection. Uh, the interesting thing, I... I noted it earlier the the support combo they are doing a hell of a job keeping this tank up on guad he is kind of on an island by himself swinging and holding shield and and both of them are pocketing him and keeping him up and really keeping these pushes alive yeah guav does a kind of impeccable job of capitalizing on surfy juggler's disruption um really uses it to to enable hyper aggression honestly coming out from yeah. the reinhardt and then we saw a cement i mean take this all the way up to the spawn door and they seem more than happy to do that that was a place where they were 100 percent okay with being uh they invested ultimates to continue that spawn door hold uh it's a it's a I, I don't want to see paradigm breaking, but it's certainly an off the wall kind of approach for a team to take. And uh -huh. I think a lot of teams would not expect it, right? Like no one, for example, you don't usually expect someone who's going to come in hard and, and hold up in front of your spawn door. It's just not how things are usually done. Yeah, so it requires a little bit of adaptation. Yeah, especially on that, after you've capped the second point there on King's Row, it, it doesn't happen a lot. It can happen there, obviously, as, as we saw it happen, but you're just not not ready for it at times and it can kind of take it take you aback and then you have to kind of you know re-coordinate yourself and get everybody on the same page on how you're going to attack that and and that's what it took and it ended up eating i think a minute and a half of that time bank it ate up a lot of it because by the time they got around the corner it was final fight territory it's you're very correct uh the investment of a few alts there was kind of paying dividends in terms of the time bank if not necessarily in terms of elims definitely in terms of keeping the enemy away a yeah. couple of swaps coming in here though we have tearjerker ad coming in uh on the main tank position there so he'll yep. be taking over for guav father and then mania 405 will be coming in in the DP dps slot uh in favor of tropics so a couple of changes no one not making any swap at swaps at all 
Uh, this is first to four, I believe. First We've to had three that is what we have determined. This is first to three. Grand finals will be first to four. Okay. <laughs> so your good, championship good match is first to four. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. And plus, these guys got to play. Whoever wins this has to play another match in three days. That is true. It's a it's a tight turnaround for for maps here to be sure uh, for these divisional players, which is you know a bit rough. But uh, unfortunately, just kind of what we had to do, all things considered. Uh, still waiting on the next map pick, I believe, to come in. No one, of course, getting to choose the map. Um, so we'll see what they want to run here in the assault category with match point on the line. You would presume that they will go to whatever they consider to be their absolute bread and butter. Uh, now is not time the time to be speculating. Yeah, as we are going to have a swap on the side of no one, we're going to have Cold Tortoise come in for Avian Tet, as as you have so aptly been able to pronounce that name. <laughs> uh, I'm just I, waiting. God only knows. <laughs> They don't ever provide us with the pronunciation guides, Gate. It's a bit of a problem. It really uh, is. Uh, I didn't see uh, those you just uh, player guess. cards. <laughs> so... You just gotta guess. You're like a blind man struggling in the dark. And I tell you when, the Overwatch League, they don't have names that are quite so strange. No, they really um, don't. Uh, I'm waiting on the guy to come in that's got a bunch of numbers they have to pronounce. Uh, for those that don't follow Hearthstone, <laughs> there is a world champion whose name was Tom60209. So <laughs> they had to actually say the numbers every time, which was quite comical. <laughs> so good. That is that is something. Um, well, we'll see here at match point if no one gets kind of rolled up and cement just uh, you know puts the puts the kibosh on this right away. Um, but we'll see what we can do here. Hanamura looks like will be the choice. So an interesting one to be sure. Another kind of classic Overwatch map. A lot of teams do like Hanamura. Uh, in the much blind assault slash two CP category, uh, they they do like Hanamura. Yeah, uh, that seems to be the pick, and uh, maybe they just like cherry blossoms. Maybe that's why. Maybe. Probably I mean, cherry I, I enjoy pretty, cherry pretty, blossoms. Pretty, pretty, pretty map. It, yeah. it, it's beautiful. The, I mean, you could um, pick like the map based things. on aesthetics. All things for you know, all things equal. <laughs> if it looks better, pick it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, just waiting for the ready up on the teams here before we hop back into Hanamura, see what we can get going here. Backs to the wall for no one. Cement, though, got to feel relatively comfortable. They're not swapping out Surfy Juggler, that's for sure. So I assume that the, the Ball of Doom will continue to roll uh, here on Hanamura, the, the peaceful streets of Tokyo, about to experience the devastating force of one angry hamster. Yep. And uh, what I'm being, I'm actually being overruled now by, by another source that uh, it is first to four. So I tell you what, we're going to play first to four. And if it was some, for some reason, supposed to be first to three, if they end up ruling it that way, well, we have the video evidence of who was first to three. And uh, we'll play it first to four just to be safe on, on that end uh, until we get a clarification because there is a bit of it of a confusion given that we have a final and a grand final in tier two and tier three. And I think that's where the confusion is coming in uh, with the interpretation of the rule. And unfortunately, uh, those folks that make the determination are unresponsive right now. <laughs> one has been sick, as many of you know, and uh, the other one is five hours ahead of us on the East Coast. So we will get a ruling as soon as we have it, but we will play first to four in this match. All right. Sounds good. I hope that made sense to everyone. That's about as much sense as I could make out of it. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Uh, we are not rules officiators. We are casters, um, <laughs> which has often been the case. So, yes, we we, we do could not make the rules. We are just we're just here to break you the, the broadcast. <laughs> you just tell us how many could we you play, and we do we give you that. <laughs> could you imagine in the Overwatch League if they're like bread? Answer this rules question for us. Right. We, the rules we need your stats. I'm Joe. <laughs> he, he just breaks out a book and starts flipping through pages. <laughs> you know, that, uh, no, uh, we that would be incredible. We don't do that kind of thing around here. <laughs> so, all right. I am just waiting on the ready up from both teams. As it looks like uh, Cement is ready. Just waiting on the uh, ready up from no one. It looks like they are just now ready. Uh, all right. So we will go ahead and roll on in to All right, Hanamura. let's get started. Let's run it. 
Let's get started, ladies and gentlemen. So not quite match point. Back's not quite to the wall here because we are playing to four, but still a dangerous situation. Uh, if you're going to harness the momentum and turn this bad boy around, uh, now is the time to start harnessing the momentum. <laughs> like right now. Yeah, now would be a good time. Now would be a good time. It's good, it, as good a time as ever, as I like to say, so... We will get all things going here. And we did not swap sides here. We now have official confirmation from a tournament admin that it is indeed first four. So we do know. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, Soldier coming out on the defense, probably not entirely unexpected. This is a decent map for Soldier players. Mania on the uh, May makes sense as well. The wall's so deadly here. Uh, the only person slightly out of place in this team comp is Surfy Juggler on the ball, but hey, uh, we know what he's capable of. Cold Tortoise coming out of the ball on the other side, so ball on ball warfare here uh, as we, <laughs> we begin to start. Taking kind of the traditional attack route here that uh, opens them up to an excessive amount of damage as Surfy Juggler comes down. Surfy Juggler getting juggled! Oh, ho, ho, hello! There was a Doomfist there, and he said a big hello to everybody's favorite hamster player and smacked him right out the front door. Now the charge coming on fast and furious here as the other ball starts to take off around that bell, which honestly, what kind of rope is securing that? Not moving at all as that giant hamster mobile spins around it. Darkness burned out. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is kind of a blitz first point take here. Surfy Juggler coming back trying to save the day. Uh, might not be able to do it, though. Goes up, comes down, runs away. I'm not even sure what exactly happened there as we saw Surfy just get picked off and all of a sudden it was a steamroll and Cement really had no answer for that that aggression that we saw no one come out with as it looks like it's a taste of their own medicine just taking that aggression right to the aggressor. You know, the old, the old beating Mike Tyson approach. Everyone's, you know, great until you get punched in the mouth. Everyone's great until you get punched in the mouth. Truly a, a magnificent quote. Uh, Darkness getting one pick there, but kind of not enough, considering that the fight roiling on the point is not going in favor uh, of the attackers very oh much. Boy. Oh, boy! Great shatter! Hello, tearjerk ad! That'll, uh, that'll do it. And that'll yeah, blow that one game. right open there. Surfy Juggler trying to get in on the action as well. I love the fact that we just have two wrecking balls rolling around, creating just complete madness up in here. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's making um, this game hard to follow. I'm going to tell you that much. I, God, I don't even know what's going on half the time. I just hear vicious squeaking and robotic noises. Uh, Surfy Juggler are going to come pop the top. Them. There's the minefield coming in, but there's a tire as well in the back line. Throwing in the sound barrier here. Low bronze taken out. Tack Pfizer coming up off the high ground, trying to get some sort of value out of it. Can't find much. Billowy Splash gets Tear Jerker down, but Darkness returns the favor. Surfy Juggler still here. Surfy Juggler gets another one with the mines. It's like they're magnetized. The enemy just oh, walks Lord. into them. They nearly took out Cold Tortoise on one as well. There were, what, these are magical minefields. They this are. They are. These are the greatest minefields I've ever seen. But there were eight alts popped on that fight. Five of them by no one before they got through the door. So, alt economy, you might want to think about comboing those alts a little bit better if you're on the side of no one. Everybody is antsy, and I think they are playing, you know, they're playing on borrowed time right now. They're trying to get back into this thing. They had that huge time advantage because of the pick early on the wrecking ball. They just need to settle in and play their game. Shots coming on from the attackers, trying to just maintain control of this high ground right now. Big Burrito keeping his team up relatively well here as they try and push forward. Not getting a lot of value right now. Pulse Bomb coming in on the backside, can't do much. Surfy Juggler just kind of holding position here. Knocks the other Wrecking Ball who goes off to the side. Actually kind of helped him out there. Cold Tortoise just goes and I think tries to grab a health pack. And they're going to rotate all around the left. Dangerous plays here with Surfy Juggler on that Wrecking Ball. But Surfy gets juggled again, madly there to put the kibosh on that particular attack and now they're going to start pushing forward onto the point nuisance free coalescence coming out of the backside the charge coming in as well but they will be able to keep billowy splash up through this 
Bronze is down. Tearjerker is down. They're counter slamming oh, the, the point and Surfy Juggler unleashes is. another minefield and he's got Legunk again. Oh no. Stay away from those Legunks. They're big, they glow, they're very dangerous. Yeah, those aren't And good. that I think signaled the candy. end of the attack. <laughs> they, they will kill you. And then I thought Big Burrito was going to step into one as he was dancing dangerously close on that Lucio to getting him another 2k on those mines. So, I mean, Surfy just gets incredible value. I, I wish I could get that kind of value on a Wrecking Ball myself. My word. Full disruption. I'm sorry if I... Apparently we cut out what we said first to you because uh, we wanted to keep you guys in suspense. It is first to four. <laughs> that is that's, that's perfect. you are. This is... This is not a scuff production. <laughs> not at all, 100%. Tearjerker pushing forward now, just trying to hold this bridge. Billy Splash coming up alone, uh, right into the face of a coalescence as well. But here's a little bit of help from his off tank uh, in the form of an angry hamster. Colt gets two with his minefield and they'll throw in the hammer down as well. Attack Visor coming off of the high ground though. Darkness trying his best to turn it around. Darkness gets one, That's Darkness attack. gets two. Mania in there with a pulse bomb. Oh, dark. And somehow Darkness has held on to this. The Soldier 76 keeping it alive, uncontested on the high ground and just pouring in fire skate. My, my word, that was impressive by Darkness. Pop the visor at just the right time to save the team because I think that was a 4v2 at that point. Uh, but the visor able to get the squishy targets down and basically get it down to just the Reinhardt left on point who charged the wrong way away from Darkness and Darkness just feasting on the back of that Reinhardt as he had no control over himself. <laughs> Absolute hero plays coming out from Soldier 76. Holding that position, Darkness living up to every expectation and now the attack on the high ground. There's a good slam in there. Uh oh, here we Counter go. Counterslam minefield. He's got another one. It's Big Burrito this time who goes down to the mines. LTD getting in on the action as well. Gets two. My God. It's like clockwork. I have I have not seen this effective of a wrecking ball minefields pretty much ever. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm at a loss right now. Oh, man. He this swapped. He swapped to Roadhog now. This is going to be a... I got to see this. Okay. I can only imagine what well, we're for now. I, I guess. Oh, you can only kill so many people with mines before it just starts to. Uh, it just gets old. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the luster wears off. Um, I think a pulse bomb went out there. I don't it think did. they got a lot of value out of it. The attackers here, no one, just trying to push up these stairs. They're going to be met in the face by a multicolored whirl of pain there from the coalescence. The sound barrier getting invested too. Cold coming around to the backside there, and a little bit of danger will actually peel back off to the rest of his team, trying to avoid Surfy Juggler's hook. LTD just spraying the healing like it'll never come back. Huge hook! Attack Visor coming out, gets madly out of the action. The counter attack Visor comes in from the other side. Plenty of room for that as well. The hammer down coming in, not a ton of value to be derived. Sound Barrier comes in as they drop down. High Noon on the high ground gets one. That's a low bronze taken out of the action. The minefield claims Tearjerker as he comes in for the slam. That's unfortunate because Darkness won't be able to save him this time. LTD is here trying to fight it out. Surfy Juggler goes into whole hog mode. Won't get much out of it. Now a low bronze is back in on Lucio. Gets bounced up in the air and smacked away That's by Billowy Splash. And they will take it in overtime. My word. Uh... Surfy Juggler just making plays. It doesn't matter if he's on the ball or the hog. That was a huge hook coming out just as the visor came up. Quick reaction to turn. Get the hook and one shot. The uh, the attacking soldier there who had f for just free reign on the enemy team as they were pushing in on that high platform and there was going to be no answer. It was a, kind of a crazy just attack back and forth there, Skate. Obviously, uh, Cement feeling a little bit of pressure coming off the opposing ball. Presumably, that's why Surfy Juggler swapped over to the Hog there. Uh, I mean, Darkness, real hero of the hour, trying to hold things together. But in the end, I think they kind of just got beat out by the sheer amount of ults that were thrown their way. Yeah, and, and that really seemed to be the difference there. As it looked like we were getting close to a mirror comp at one point, the DPS are starting to mirror each other a little bit on both of these squads. Since we saw a McCree and a soldier on both sides there. But uh, we'll have to see. This is an interesting little attack here as we have, right now we're looking at Shimada Brothers coming out. Oh, the Shimada Bros, everybody's favorite professional wrestling duo, uh, <laughs> yes, making their I appearance here in the game of Overwatch. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd watch it. I would. Um, I've seen worse. One hundred percent. Genji's got like some sort of flying guillotine elbow that they call the dragon <laughs> oh, blade. Yeah, you know I'd be, I'd be all in on guy. it. <laughs> yeah. Boom. All right, let's see what we got here. Madly playing that Torbjorn, which is always an interesting choice. Put his turret in not so great a spot, though, but that's okay. We won't judge. Uh, shot coming down the choke point here, throwing in some damage. Surfy Juggler, he's going to come straight up to the door. Uh, Surfy Juggler uh, drops that shield for half a second and uh, gets immediately murked. And uh, now they're going to back, you know, back away. Uh, Tearjerker more than happy to play up there for half a second, get some charge. Has to stay alive, though, and that's the real danger of being up this close. Gotta resist the temptation to cross that threshold without the Rhine. Okay, it's here's Surfy really Juggler good. back on the Rhine. There's the ball, or bubble coming out, I should say. So used to seeing him on ball, it's a bit strange to see him playing the Reinhardt, but they're just gonna keep up this hyper aggression. They're speeding straight in now. Dueling Coalescence is released. One coming out from LTD, I think, a few seconds later. Ooh, Jujurker gets a kill. That'll take the Aris out of the fight. Now, Survey Juggler somehow knocks Ana off to the edge. You see Autumn Canvas come charging up to get a low bronze, but it's not enough. And they'll take it on the team kill gong. Yeah, uh, as we see the tank swapping roles, as you kind of mentioned coming into this, we got Tearjerker who was playing the Rhine on the defense, now playing the Zarya on the attack, so switching this up. And that was an aggressive push, but we saw the same thing out of no one as they kind of came in and capped early and then had to get the second point in overtime. We'll have to see if the same holds true for Cement or if they can get it done right here. Oh, Cement trying to push up the front door. Coming up those stairs right into the fight, but the Gravitic Flux coming out. That's a little rough. Sound barrier thrown in will help, but Surfy Juggler up there on the Reinhardt can't really do much about it considering the goof that's all over the floor. And that'll signal a fall back here uh, for all intents and purposes. Fight is over. Yeah, we'll have to see if Lucio can get out here. Uh, he's, he's making a play. He will be able to get out. Okay. Uh, we do have alts online for both teams. Three for each. You've got the Nano. You've got the Bongo. And you have Deadeye online for no one. And then you have, wow, we have four now. As in the moment of me calling that, Darkness, Mania, Tearjerker, and Surfy, the Danks and DPS for Cement all have ultimates online as we go into this fight in the upper corridor here well they need to use them uh the temptation there is there. Is. <laughs> they're swinging into it oh god oh, the dragon ball combo make a wish there darkness as they drop down onto the point and again darkness the dps player continuing to be the perennial thorn in the side of the defenders and it looks like they've cleared the way to try and take this out comes the contest it's billowy splash on the ball this time as cold tortoise drops in drops the orissa bongo high noob coming out the other side no value to be had out of that bongo going down almost immediately surfing juggler swinging away gets one a low bronze will go down They've nano boosted the hamster this time. He'll oh! try and fight it out. Can they Gets shattered almost up? point blank. Darkness is out of this fight. He will not be contributing any more to this particular engagement. Surfy Juggler just trying to stay alive. Won't be able to do it. A good anti-nade there coming in on Tearjerker. Signals the end of that attack, but it was really solid, really well done. Cost him a lot of ults. Yeah, that was, uh, woo! We, we saw the grab dragon come out and the coalescence on back of it. So that was like super dragons coming out there on that attack. This. And it almost paid dragon. off, but it, but that, that spawn advantage definitely playing a big role there. Scientific evidence. These dragons are 10 times worse than regular dragons. Yes. Dare I say it, yes, they, super, they dragon. super dragons. <laughs> Only thing is Cold Tortoise is actually still on Winston here. Uh, which is maybe not the best decision. Uh, Coalescence coming out now, so that'll be uh, opportunity for Cement to kind of get escorted down to the point. They've caught a McCree out there. Autumn Canvas will go down to that very strange Dragon Strike that was kind of released almost through a wall. Two picks now coming in for the attackers. They're trying to hold this one out. Counter Coalescence coming out now, keeping Billowy Splash up. They'll throw in the sound barrier there. Cold Tortoise cannot stand behind the fury of Surfy Juggler on the point. Surfy getting knocked around though, like a cork in a storm by Madly Dankart, but he'll hold back onto it. Tearjerker ad there now as well. High Noon coming out the shield up to cancel most of it out. Somebody has to get on point. I don't know who's gonna be the volunteer. Looks like it was Billy Splash. He'll die almost immediately. Grabs comes in, and then there's a Doom Fist in the middle of everything for oh half a second. Madly though, Just burned water. down almost immediately. Legunk holding on by the fingernails. It won't be enough. And that is the tie-up right there. 
Yeah, time remaining though, so only Cement going to get a shot at this attack. We'll see if no one can force the draw and just basically ignore this map. Yeah, dig in, no yeah. one. You're in for a bit of a rough ride. Yeah, we'll have. But you know, given what we saw by both teams on the attack, nobody's strong suit is defending point A. It looks like on Hanamura. So <laughs> we'll see <laughs> what happens here. We have two minutes and sixteen seconds, which, at the pace they were going before, is a lifetime. Well, buckle up, Buckaroo. It might not be match point, but it kind of feels like it in a lot of ways. Uh, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to claw that reverse sweep out of the ground if you can't pull this off and at least force the tie. Yeah. yeah. But my lord. You got to go full 2004 it Red will Sox be hard. if you're going to come back. <laughs> Skate, I don't think the majority of our viewing old I don't care. It's old enough my to channel. Get that one. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> If it makes you happy, why it the does. hell is it so bad, as, <laughs> as somebody once said. Uh, badly dank art coming in. There's another reference for, for the old folks uh, on the other side. Is it us who are wrong? No, clearly it's the children who are wrong. <laughs> Obviously. Badly dank. Uh, dank art sitting up on the high ground here. They're going to run the Bastion strategy on defense. Tearjerker right. coming out now on the Rhine. And they're going to have Surfy not playing the ball, but instead playing the Sigma. And he's going to get right up in the face of absorbing as much damage as he can. They're going to come underneath the Bastion now. They've got one person touching the point, which will force out the momentum shift, but they will take LTD down almost immediately. Autumn Canvas gets killed in the rotation. It's a trade they're probably willing to make, though, for the healer pick. A lot of pressure being thrown the direction of Dead and Madly. He can't uh -oh. stand. Cold Porters can't diva. stand either. Billowy Splash, the only one left alive and not making much of a splash as all at all, and that should be Curtains. That should be the third point, and Cement will take the huge... 3-0 lead here. One more to go. Can they make it a clean 4-0, Skate? That's the question you have to be asking yourself at this point. Yeah, that is the only question to ask ourselves, but I don't know if they can. I mean, no one has proven that they, these maps have been fairly close. Like, it's it's not like the 3-0 blowouts that you tend to see. Uh, no one was in every single map of Li Zhang. Had they not got stalled, I think, on yeah. that uh, that push on King's Row where they got kind of spawn camp, they would have been right there with uh, with Cement as well on King's Row. And then this one, obviously, going to that last deciding round. You have to feel for him a little bit. Uh, it's been close. No one has definitely been trying to hang. It just feels like every time push comes to shove, uh, the shove is not going in favor of them. Uh, they're losing out, like you said, on very close situations. And I mean, they mounted a pretty impressive defense there of the second point of Hanamura. Uh, I just think it was that that first, the rip, the rapidity of that first point take just made it so that it, it was too hard for them to hold on. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. It, it just that pace was, was too much to handle as we will <clears throat> wait to get the, the last map here. Or I'm sorry, the last of the four. So then we reset the... Uh, the map pool back to uh, control point for the fifth map if necessary. So we'll have to wait and see what we have here for the hybrid, or I'm sorry, not the hybrid, the escort map is what we go to next. So it is worth pointing out, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, whoever wins this match will go on to play the winners of the match that is currently happening on CGL1. Mm -hmm. uh, that is between Pack Academy and the Hateful 88s. Uh, that has just completed its first round on Ilios, going in favor of the Pack Academy. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, if they can pull that one out, uh, obviously something to keep an eye on here. And presuming that this doesn't end on the next map, uh, we'll keep you in the loop about what's happening in terms of scores from that game as well, because they Absolutely. are happening relatively concurrently. Yeah, we'll have to see just waiting on that last assault map pick here. Or I'm sorry, uh, escort map pick as I update the assault map score. As there you go. We have a sub. We're going to have Guafather come back in for Tearjerker. He got his uh, he got his five minutes there, so <laughs> you gotta take a breather. He's, he's the bench guy he sure that you did. bring in at the end of the half to kind of just fill in that time, and he just goes he's a spark plug yeah. guy. <laughs>
he did a solid job. He, he did, did fine. fantastic. He, he, he stepped into the role perfectly well, did exactly what he needed to do. Um, I thought it was interesting that they kind of switched Surfy Juggler over to the Rhine for a couple of pushes there. I don't think that was necessarily a bad choice on uh -huh. their part, all things considered. Um, and, it, and it worked for them. And uh, we'll see, I guess, what what we have coming up for us here as we go into the pure escort phase. Uh, escort, a difficult map type, not as difficult as assault per se, but still challenging. It is not the map type that I would want to have if I was trying to run it back. Let's just put it at that. Yeah, it's, it's really not the one you want, but it is a map that can feast on momentum. You have to get that momentum going in your favor. And depending on the map that you you select here will kind of feed into that. Uh, if you get the right map, you can run that escort all the way down to the third point if you needed to and just run right through. So we will see. I'm still waiting on that call. We did get the subs as we're going to have Avian back in for Cold Tortoise. So we're almost back to those initial six lineups for both teams. The only difference is uh, Mania is still in for Tropics. I think that... Uh, one thing that maybe you may take away from Hanamura is they did a slightly better job mm -hmm. of containing uh, Surfy Juggler's Hammond play or Wrecking Ball play, which is why I think we saw him play a variety of tanks. And to a certain extent, uh, the Wrecking Ball they had on attack, who I believe was Cold Tortoise, was causing enough consternation that they forced Surfy Juggler off of the ball and onto the hog, which was an interesting choice as well. Uh -huh. So uh, kind of... Uh, kind of shutting that one down for lack of a better word but we'll see uh what what they come out with here no one obviously going to be feeling the pressure uh an insane amount of pressure here <laughs> as we get ready for this last map uh because you've got no choice yeah that's just the way the cookie crumbles <laughs> yeah that is the way the cookie crumbles this is it all the marbles whatever else you want to say uh, that's where we're at. And it looks like we'll be going to Rialto here. Uh, so backs against the wall. Uh, if you're a, uh, a cement fan, get your brooms out now. Uh, <laughs> now start, would be that start time. waving them around. <laughs> Broom time, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, get the broom Hashtag there, Sir the Miami. Broom. He's, he's on the same wavelength as I am. He has figured uh, it out. Get your brooms. <laughs> he's on uh, to us. Meanwhile, if you're on no one, uh, hide the brooms. Yeah. Close down the brooms. Uh, Break them all. As can. <laughs> Do not try Break to stand the them brooms. up on the end. <laughs> Break all the brooms. Don't tell anyone where they are. Put your put your feet in the ground and, and make a stand. Uh, they're changing up all their icons here too uh, to Overwatch League teams, trying to channel some of that Overwatch League energy. Uh, unfortunately, one of them has selected the Houston Outlaws. That's uh, not the energy you want to channel. That is not the energy <laughs> you want, sir. <laughs> Oh, that one. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, not Boston Uprising either. Never mind. I'll stop. No. <laughs> negative energy. Negative energy. Uh, coming yeah, in I there. think that could come back but, to uh, bite you. <laughs> <laughs> it could. It could do. Um, it looks like no one will be starting off on the attack here. Cement playing the defense. So, ooh, I will get a good idea right at the start, I think, Skate, how this is going to go. Uh, yeah, I, I think we will too. It. it, it... I think this map, this could go, you, if you're if you're on no one, you really don't want to get stalled on this first corner, Rialto. No. You absolutely. You, you need, yeah. You need this first team fight. You need, you need to, to come it. in and win that corner. Because it can snowball the wrong way very quickly on Rialto if you can't get around that corner. Yeah, the corner of death uh, in so many ways, and I think the most kind of standout corner of a death in all of overwatch is that first corner on rialto and you have to just blitz your way past it uh you really do the second corner is you know a good place to hold as well but it does not have the same kind of uh mental weight to it as getting held up on that first corner does no no if ands or buts about it i, right. I think um if you can get past that first corner, you can really make the push count. So we'll see. Uh, I would not want to be in their position right now, uh, all truth be told, but I, 
you know, like you said, Skate, it's been close. It's yep. been close. They can, they could do this. They can at least take a map. 100% they can at least take a map. I Very think it's possible so. that they can reverse sweep if they really played to a level that we've seen them touch a couple of times. They could turn this one around, but I think they could at least walk away with this with a map uh, and make everybody put the brooms away. I do think so. Yeah, I... I... I, I tend to agree on that. Uh, we are still waiting on the ready up here to get this thing going. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, yeah, no swapping them aside. So, uh, interesting choice on the uh, the icons here. I don't know if you noticed it. We have the uh, the one San Francisco shock that is orange, and the rest have the, uh, the <laughs> black and gray <laughs> color scheme. So, someone likes to stand out. <laughs> Just an update on the scores over there from CGL1. Pack Academy going up 1-0 uh, over the Hateful 88s. Uh, they won Ilios. So Good. that is the current score from that game. Uh, back over here, though, uh, it's been all cement all the time. Uh, and as we go into Rialto, no one hoping to uh, put an end to that trend, as it were. Yeah, we'll have to see. All right, and now it looks like we are going to have a late swap here. We're going to have DXP going in for Mania. DXP right. going in for Mania. Okay. Yeah, so we have well, a, a new DPS coming into play here. So we'll have to see. And then they are ready. So it looks like uh, that team is ready. And I just need the ready up from Cement. I think we will be good to go. Or I'm sorry, from, uh, from no one. Oh, they are ready. Okay. I had to read up. So, yes, we are ready to go. There were three people typing in the chat. It was hard to keep track when, <laughs> when everything looks so We're ready so from to... no one. No one is ready. You're right. We're not. No one is ready. <laughs> Clearly, we're not ready for this. Hashtag get the broom. Yes. Fetch it to the broom and let us begin here on Rialto. Might be seeing some sweeping up. Might be seeing the start of an epic comeback. You never know. Uh, time to channel the power of Grace Gall here. Go full heat, man. <laughs> um, turn this one around. It might if be you're ever going to do it, if you're ever going to do it, it's now. Reach deep down inside. Chug the G fuel. Whatever it is that gets you going. Listen to Metallica full speed. Speed up Metallica. Yeah, speed up Metallica. What. It needs Take to be faster. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that. Listen to Through the Fire on the Flames at triple speed. I don't know what it is, but God, power well, Maybe it's Rammstein. Up, I don't know. Whatever you're into, man. <laughs> maybe it's Rammstein. Lost. <laughs> Lost, man. Oh, that's a great song, to be fair. It, it is. is quite funny. <laughs> right. I remember when I was in high school, that was Rammstein. That was a thing. Like, that it was really people were was. super into that. It was. Oh, yeah, it was that weird. was on the backs of the, the Triple X movie because they were featured in that. That's right. Yeah. That was just, oh, what a strange time. Yeah. What a strange time that was. I don't know how that German metal band uh, got got <laughs> big, but it did. Uh, all right. Well, let's see what they've got here on deck. Amer Autumn Canvas will be coming out on the Fara to start things off. Has the full pocket there from the Mercy. Big Burrito playing in that role. Now the charge coming forward and they have actually secured the front line here for half a second. Not enough though, cause Surfy Juggler comes in, but they've got a low bronze early on. Oh no, Billowy Splash goes down. Oh, but they'll return the favor and get the rest. So they are up here. Here comes the charging Reinhardt. Billowy Splash playing like a Rhine possessed. And they will start to push the payload forward, but full pressure on Surfy oh, Juggler dies. Oh no! I don't the know ball if out ball. Whatever was. it is, it's not great. Oh no! Spillowy Splash takes Baptiste. Pack your bags there, LTD, because you're going on a trip. Yeah, I hope everybody bought their swim trunks because apparently it's a pool party. Everybody's going for a dip right now. Uh, you don't want to. You don't want to get that Venice water either. Let me tell you. <laughs> you ever heard of Giardia? Because you're gonna hear about it now. Let me let me tell you what. Anyway, the contest coming out. Here comes the window. They throw the fire strike in it, but no real joy. They're kind of using the cart here as cover. A low bronze going down early again. That's the second time they've been picked first. DXP replays gets taken out. They will lose the mech. There's a charge that's going to shut the ball down. Oh my lord, the kills are just stacking up here. And for the first time all night, 
it really looks like the folks from Cement are reeling here under these hammer blows coming out from the attackers. Yeah, they, uh, I think they heard us talking about brooms and went and snapped all the brooms they could find in the house. And I think they even threw the <laughs> vacuum out as well. We don't want anything that moves dirt in this house. So brooms, <laughs> mops, vacuums, shop vacs, whatever they anything. can find. <laughs> throwing it all in the dump and Servy Juggler rolling away and you don't feel his impact as much here, Skate. You really don't. Huge shatter coming out on the side. Bomb getting thrown in as well. Minefield oh. came out here, but a little bronze is down again. Quadfather and bronze both take it out. Though Servy Juggler is doing the one man act here. The nun shall pass. Ian McKellen impression back on the point. Unfortunately, is forced to roll away. Can't hold on to it for that long. And this card is barnstorming forward. And I have to ask, Skate, where has this team been? I think it's they've been able to get those picks on a low bronze, and that has been the difference because a low bronze has been able to play us alongside Guavfather, and those two dropping early has been the reason they've been losing these fights. This has been a Ryan v. Ryan battle. Whoever wins that Ryan battle has been winning these team fights so far. Good cheddar on the, the backside, and finally the kills are starting to stack up here on the opposing side. The momentum slowing down just a little bit. Surfy Juggler comes up, gets a little bit of a love tap there uh, from the Doomfist. That's Madly, who will fall back. And finally, it looks like they have put a stop to this charge that's going forward. And you might be right there, Skate. Uh, might have been the Lucio difference. Yeah, if they can keep, if a low bronze doesn't get in a spot in a unfortunate spot i think because i don't think it has anything to do with the way he's playing i think it has just been the way the picks have been it's just an unfortunate circumstance when he... but when oh, up, oh, oh no. look gunk oh that into the a, dip as well a but a low boot. bronze is down Surfy Juggler here are still creating some problems. They didn't get the Nano off before Lagunk got brought down, but it really wasn't enough to make a difference. Meteor Strike is thrown up on the high ground. No value to be gotten out of that at all as Madly Dank will go down. And that'll force a reset here and uh, the initial burst of energy, the, the G Fuel the G fuel benefit slowing down just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to go find some more G Fuel if you can, uh, and you better hurry because you got two and a half minutes left here. Uh, but Ultimates, all, almost all of them online for the side of Cement right now. There's the Deadly Minefield. We've seen them derive a ton of value from it before, but it's DX Replay who gets brought down. Barrage in the back line. Legunk will still die, though. And LTD <laughs> coming forward. Darkness there as well. The res on Billowy Splash, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be enough for them to continue going forward. The hamster all over the place up on the front side. But Autumn gets one, and they might have come out on there. top of this. The Doomfist is coming back in. Quathfather destroyed. The sound barrier comes out half a second too late. It will allow them to continue contesting, though, for a second here as Avian Ted goes in. But Surfy Juggler is dead. The big contest, the king is gone. Low bronze here, though, still trying to keep this one alive with a couple of DPS there to back him up. And low bronze still alive, somehow contesting this point, holding it almost alone is the brave little Lucio that could. And they will drive the attackers back out the front door. Yeah, I, I'm struggling with the camera right now as it seems to have stuck onto someone here. I think I may maybe have broke it here. I'm not sure. Uh, so I'm struggling oh with God. the controller to follow the action. So go ahead and just pick it back up, Corbeck, and I will chime in as soon as I figure this out. I'm not finished. Well, the pressure really up on the spawn door again, and we've seen Cement do this before. Now they've got a bit of a tall order here as they come across. Billowy Splash taking a lot of damage early on. There's another minefield! Surfy Juggler gets the gunk again! Surfy Juggler, the ball! Unstoppable! The champion! The killer! What can they possibly do as a Coalescence comes out and burns down two on the back end of it all? And they're back at the spawn doors here. Oh no, absolute disaster for no one but Cement. Hold strong, lives up to the name. And there's not a lot they can do. You feel those seconds ticking down, Skate, and this feels like absolute desperation time. Survey Juggler is hacked on the high ground and he gets taken out. Here comes the bomb. Maybe that's the opening they need. They have the nano boost here. If they choose to lose it, use it, but they lose Big Burrito almost immediately. Oh, the nano comes in. It's a great anti name, but the bomb is there. Lagunk goes down. Lagunk taken out of the action once more. And without the Ana in the pocket, you wonder just how much they can do. Billowy Splash is taken down. Replay holding the line. Another good hack 
on the ball in the back line, but it's Darkness Blue and DX replays to hold on to the point. All right, while we switch sides, I'm going to throw to us so I can uh, try and fix this uh, spectate under third person. Hi, how's it going, Corbeck? Oh, great. See if How Skate are you? can fix his control. Somehow it's locked under spectate Howie. third person. Or toggle first person, third person, something. It's locked onto the same person. There is a button for that, so I'm going to look through and see if I can find it real quick. Ooh, I mean, it was it was tragic there at the end, Skate. Uh, all things considered, it was a really good initial aggressive push coming out of no one. But you just felt after they lost that first team fight there, the momentum just bled away. And there was a moment, too, where we were kind of at a shatter point where it could have gone either way and it did not go in the way of no one. And that has kind of been the story of the night. Uh, yeah. And it was writ small there uh, in that little fight where low bronze honestly the lucio player and we don't usually give enough credit to support in these games because it's kind of hard to do that sometimes but a low bronze the lucio player the absolute hero of the hour right there keeping things together keeping them uh, just in this i mean basically was solo holding the point for a while playing a frontline position that was opening up space for the dps to really get the damage in and that was with surfy juggler down as well and guav father nowhere to be seen yeah and I've hearkened on it a few different times, but this support duo has just been phenomenal for Cement. It's the it's the harder to see, uh, you know, input unless you are a support player. You don't get what they're actually enabling to happen, and they are doing an expert job of just allowing their Ooh. team to make the play. Darkness, they need to make. take it into the dip there, but there's an angry ball behind him, and that'll force a repositioning here from this Bastion composition. It's all chaos here as Bastion drops down and just chucks in some damage on the front line. They're trying to hold on here. Avian Ted did get taken down early. Madly can't even find a target in the midst of all this mess. Guapfather, the one, gets burned down on the charge. And if they can just hold position, they can probably turn this one around. But in a sudden explosion of Legos, that would not be out of place in a seven-year-old bedroom. Out goes Madly Dankart. Uh, watch and it's step. just a ball in the background. Yeah, watch your step indeed. Those will hurt. <laughs> That's how they get you. That is how um, they get you. Absolute madness here in the back line as they're trying to plague Madly, who's just trying to get back to somewhere we can actually fight it out. Meanwhile, <laughs> on the front side, it looks like Billowy Splash is just holding this line in the yeah. sand on that Arissa. The kill's starting to come in in favor of uh -oh, the defender's keeper. Whoa, Surfy got <laughs> Autumn! But still, the Reinhardt holding on, trying to keep it alive on the front side. Oh my god. And what? they're just giving a lot of space here, Skate. They're they're yeah. backing up. And you just watch Surfy in the back oh, line hello. and he's just annoying is all he is. No he doesn't stick around for very long, but just long enough for you to turn your attention and then he's gone. It, it's incredible. They've kept this fight ball. going. There's not even been a really a reset on the side of Cement. They've just kind of kept this fight continually going. I mean, we cannot say it enough. This is absolutely do or die time here for these defenders. They have to hold this out. No one cannot give up the ground. They cannot give up the first point this early on. Oh. Avian Tet, heck overstands there. Goes in deep. Autumn Cavus trying to make up the difference. A res will come in, I think, to get the Fara back in on the action. Autumn does have ultimate in the bank right now, so that's valuable. A low bronze trying to contest here on the point. All he really does is get staggered there brutally. The ball drops in, trying to just generate a little bit of all charge and then runs for the hills. Yeah, we'll have to see if they find well, on this. Finally, they're getting this reset. So hopefully they can take this fight 6v6 because I don't think they've taken a single fight 6v6 since the first pick came out. But uh, a lot of alts online here for both teams. We'll have to see who uses their alts better here. There's the barrage on the back side. Unfortunately, not a lot of value out of it. Replay pops the attack visor, a high noon coming in as well. And those DPS alts breaking things up as a sound barrier comes out as well. They'll throw in the hammer strike too, because why not? Guavfather still holding on to the shatter, trying to keep it alive, but no, unfortunately, I think that will end that push as Surfy Juggler kind of seals the deal here. But it was a decent hold on first point skate. I think they would have wanted to take it all the way to overtime because they've now got to hold on to this for one minute, but Philly Splash! Oh my! Gives a little parting gift off the edge of the bridge there as LTD and Guavfather learned that this Orisa has some teeth and isn't afraid to use them. Oh no! Woo. 
that nearly was saw Madly mess that up. I don't know if you got that on camera. Uh, I hope for Madly's sake you, uh, say you didn't. I think it was, but it was in the, it was in the <laughs> background through the building, but yes. Oh no, a low bronze gets taken <gasps> down and Avian Ted just backs up into the minefield. A billowy splash has to put their foot down somewhere, but they're not going to find it the right field. there because darkness and DXP are just powering forward. And even though Guadfather gets taken down by a well-placed oh, punch, that kill feed, very, very blue. It really is right now, and it's starting to get close to the end of this point. you got to make sure you reset here if you're no one. You have time. Group up. This, th this thing is not over. You're going to get the res here on the Doom Fist. It should be Badly up. getting taken down there early on. There comes the res. A little slow, but it will come in. A window is down now to give him a little bit more effort. The damage bongo comes in as well. That's a lot of damage if you get it through that Huge. window. And they're making it out. Autumn Canvas getting the picks there. And Avian Tet puts the nail in the coffin with their Earth Shatter. But they use so many alts here, Skate. Yep. You almost feel like it might have been a little too eager for that Shatter. You, you question it a little bit, but at the same time, the ults we're looking at on the other side, not very daunting if you can come in and get a quick pick. So we'll have to see. This is going to be a big visor, but it's a double shield. I don't know how much value they're going to get out of that soldier visor. One minute left, or one minute, 30 seconds left. Do or die time here for the defenders. No one must win if they want to keep their playoff dreams alive. No choice. There's die, die, die. Awesome. Darkness gets two. Big Burrito and Legunk go down early on. And oh my god, one Darkness! Four. DXP replay padding cleanup and it's over. In a split second, the Reaper play by Darkness seals it all. This is the second map we've seen Darkness, Darkness just put the team on his back. Two maps in a row. Hanamura, if you remember, on that defense. Popping that visor, getting the two quick picks and then finishing off the Rhine that was charging. And then here with this huge blossom, the play of the game, possibly the play of the match to seal this for Cement and put them into the grand finals. Oh, well, you feel a little bit of pain for no one there. Such a hard fought game for them to the bitter, bitter end of this 4-0 sweep. But at the end of the day, uh, it will be Cement who come out on top. Yeah, and uh, it was just a, a quite a performance there by Cement, by the whole team all around. They are definitely a team that you can see that has a unique strategy in the way they use their off tank, and it's something that they have practiced and put into perfection, and it just works for them. And it, it's very unique, and I'm curious to see how they'll do in the grand finals uh, here on Friday that we'll be broadcasting. Uh, you and I won't. Uh, Bullskunk and Billy will have that one, I believe, on Bullskunk's channel. Uh, make sure you guys are following that stream schedule channel so that you know when these games are coming out. I'm updating them as fast as I, they come in and as soon as we get people on them. Uh, but yeah, this Cement team is a force to be reckoned with right now in Tier 2. They really are. I mean, they looked great. Uh, I think if I had to pick out one differentiating factor between the two of them, um, it a surfy juggler kind of the obvious choice but right. in general i think that the biggest difference was alt usage yeah. and alt economy at the end of the day even though it's not necessarily obvious overwatch is a game of ultimates yes um and cement used theirs so well so tactically surfy jugglers minefields are super effective in part because his team does a great job of playing into them yes we saw a great example on the rialto bridge he threw down the minefield guavfather knew that he had to hit the speed button there and just get super aggressive yep. and he just backed him right up into the minefield and it yep. blew things wide open because they they lost their reinhardt and yeah. it was that kind of play learning to play around the chaos of surfy jugglers alts using to use their alts in tandem that i think really sealed the deal yeah, so it sounds like to me that your MVP might be communication uh, on the side of, <laughs> of Cement. Oh, my God. <laughs> because like something you'd say in, like, a corporate PI, like, HR <laughs> session. I'm our glad MVP you all enjoyed our softball tournament, but the real MVP was communication. <laughs> no, if I had to pick an MVP, I, I mean, if we had to pick an MVP, I think it, it goes to Surfy Juggler for me. Um, yeah. I'd almost be tempted to split it. 
between Darkness and Surfy, Surfy Juggler. I think that overall Surfy was just more consistently, constantly impactful, doing all sorts of things. But Darkness was the the clutch player. Yeah, like that was the man when when they needed somebody to bust things open, they needed somebody to hold the line in a big way. Darkness was always there to make a difference, and he must be. I'm so amped up right now. He's right. Probably, like he's just eat, ate like ten pixie sticks. Like he has got to be buzzing. Oh yeah, uh, that's one of with those insane there. moments. You know, with with that the game's on the line, and you know, as a reaper, you can feel it when that happens because you know what the cooldowns are, and you just see things falling all around you, and it all just kind of slows down, and you're just able to pick it off. I I can't argue with those. I'm going to make a different pick. My pick is actually going to be a low bronze based on what we mm. said earlier about how this team works together as a unit and that Lucio, they all come together on that Lucio. And like you said, Surfy was able to get those mines in the backfield. Well, that's enabled then by a low bronze hitting that speed boost and being able to push that team yeah. through and keep staying on Guav's hip that whole time. And, you know, playing like this support off tank, like, I'm going to hide right beside Ryan and I'm going to protect my Ryan like an off tank would. Yeah. And that's what he did yeah. all night long. And that team thrives on that. He is the heartbeat of what makes that, uh, you know, that attack that they use work. Yeah. I mean, I do think that's part of it, to be honest. Uh, he was kind of almost filling in in that off tank role. Uh, I felt like a lot of the time yeah. in terms of supporting the Reinhardt. Um, and it's easy to overlook that, and I think a more detailed analysis of this game would probably show a low bronze contributions. Um, a lot of impactful players on cement. You know, no one, they tried hard. You felt the effort pouring out of them. I don't think that there was ever a point in time in any of those games where they stepped off the gas, but it just wasn't enough tonight. And, and it'll be cement who moves on to the next round. Yeah, it definitely will. And it looks like, uh, as I have the stream pulled up here, Pack Academy goes up two to zero now in that other first to four that's going on on CGL1. Uh, as we wrap up here, I will go ahead and host CGL1. So you guys will go right, oh, well actually we'll just do raid and we'll just run right over into CGL1 so that you guys can follow that action as well. And if you enjoy Corbeck and myself, uh, you can get more of it tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 Eastern as we, <laughs> we delve into the world that is the EU. Americans are not allowed to go to EU right now, but uh, we can broadcast it. That EU. is true. <laughs> as of today. But we will broadcast it. God damn it, we will broadcast it. Lafayette, we can't go there, we have we can, returned. We can broadcast via satellite. So. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the next match.